Hi, hello, and welcome to the Weekly Tarot Buffet brought to you by Vertex of Abundance. My name is Serene Pistablosti. I'll be your oracle today, and I was sent to deliver the findings for the transiting moon into Cancer that's going to be in most places of the world between the 1st and the 3rd of August 2024. And let's give or take about half a day, depending on the time zone. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and begin, you know, when we're in Leo season, which is most of the month of August, including the last week or so of July, we've already progressed past the sun is in the sign of Leo, of course, it's Leo season, but the sun, um, the moon is transiting cancel, okay, so that means we're having a 12th house event, so this is going to be interesting because we've kind of left behind okay so those energies are there we've kind of left behind a little bit of like the warfare or the i'm just going to call it the kaka energy we've left behind a little bit of the think energy but it's going to pop up just for a quick second with the 12th house we're going to understand the things we haven't understood the things that have been withheld from us either by the universe by the ancestors okay by the spirit realm essentially we have the Four of Cups here, which is significant. I usually just call out the Major Arcana. So we have the Strength card. So with the 12th house, we're going to understand what's been going on or why it has been going on. Usually it is not both. It might be because of however Leo affects us. It, it, it activates the special part of our chart. Everybody has that. It's just not every sign. Okay, so the special part of your chart only gets activated like once or twice a season, if that makes sense. So usually with the 12th house event, we're either understanding what has been happening or why it has been happening, usually not both. Um, with the universe, it's always best to ask what to do, not why something is happening. Because we're standing in our own energy here, nine of pentacles we've become safe and secure within the self. We've built ourselves up from the inside out. We're also finding some kind of fulfillment and it's according to material blessings, it's been some mutually beneficial nursing needs exchange with the environment around the location, nine of pentacles, six of pentacles. Now something's at the threshold as well. What that is, what that looks like, I don't entirely know. Today we'll be imposing the guidance from the Thought Tarot. That's by Alex Carla. It's illustrated by Lady Frida Harris. It's relevant to say because these cards are a zeitgeist. It's become an adjective, a noun, and a verb. Thought. Okay. So. Um, the channeling was done by Alistair. We don't have to talk about him a lot, although he is a Leo rising. And then just because they're, they're, he's problematic, kind of like Freud, it's, it's problematic, even if they've made a lot of contributions, it doesn't matter that it's good or bad or here or, or there, it's just problematic. For the times, kind of like, you know, a lot of times things will be accepted on a Monday and by the time Thursday rolls around, you have made some discoveries, for instance, there was a period of decades when nobody thought there was anything wrong with smoking. And now people are like, why would you smoke? How unhealthy? Some people still smoke though. Okay. You know, me, myself, I like to eat very fatty foods. <laughs> a lot of people would argue about that. Yeah, so with this Four of Cups, I think that the threshold, if there's been some mutual beneficial nursing needs exchange, but we've had to stand alone or isolated or safe and secure in the self. We've had to build ourselves up from the inside out. With the Nine of Pentacles, it would suggest that the investments in the self are paying off. Now, I'm also detecting that we're right for something or we're ripe for something. Right for something or ripe for something. Pardon me for popping my keys on a mic. I know better. 
Now we've been doing a little jiggy, doing a little dance, kind of um, mutually beneficial nursing, so we've had to barter and trade or just navigate, negotiate through situations, experiences. And things have been a little bit shocking when we engage with others. So we've had to kind of retreat to the self more than a few times I'm gathering, which is very antithesis of the 12th house. It talks about institutional care, ancestral care. Ultimately, the goal of that house is to, is to prepare you for leaving the body. So we'll talk about the sunrise period or the end, of, end stage of life. And that's the truth here with the eight of swords, something that has been sitting at the threshold, which is the truth, clarity, intellect, everything, and communication with the ten of swords, something that's emerged to the light. Something that we were dealing with mutually beneficially nourishing need to exchange or bartering with would have emerged with some kind of clarity, some kind of truth. We are breaking out, breaking free. There's also new strength here. But that's in the higher more of all self or in the place of the other. Because with the queen, we're needing to be independent. We're needing to be the queen of pentacles, nine of pentacles. We're needing to be safe and secure in the self, without ourselves self from the inside out. But we're also needing the investments in the self, like I said before, to yield, to manifest. I'm going to have to pause for a second. Okay, we're back. So... While I've been sitting here with this energy, I'm also detecting that there's some kind of dark energy around us, but we're breaking free from it. So it may come out that we've lifted, uh, our curse is lifted, our spell is broken. And I, that always is the case whenever the, the just, uh, the, my photo of that, the strength card here, it's called lust or um, dieci disparate, um, casa disparate, the ten of swords here, it's called ruin. Um, that de that can talk about a spell lifting, and then it's like a double confirmation with the Ace of Swords and the the full card here, El Mondo. So um, I'm also detecting that a spell is lifted. So you know, if we're having a twelfth house event, there have been things going on without our knowing. We might have been under some kind of spell, some kind of energy manipulation, spiritual projection of some kind. And normally I would say energy projection, spiritual manipulation, but a long-term or generational, we don't have the 10 of wands or five of wands here, so it might not be generational or five of cups, it might not be generational, but a long-term spell that we don't know about or a curse that we don't know about, that can be spiritual projection, energy manipulation. So normally I, I reverse those words. I usually say spiritual manipulation, not the other one, and then energy projection, but this time it's a spiritual projection, energy manipulation. So during this little transit, it's only four. I mean, during this little transiting moon, we're only going to have four major transits with the moon itself. The moon will sextile Mercury, will trine Saturn, will sextile Uranus, will trine Neptune, when just before it was squaring Neptune. So our intuition, our eternal soul is going to have some kind of mutually beneficial nourishing needs exchange. We're going to be getting a leg up from the Lord of Karma, Saturn, and from the collective subconscious, which is Neptune. There's also a couple opportunities that are intuition, Mercury, and that are the superconscious Uranus can peer up. So this would be peer up, I said, not pair up, peer up. Um, I meant to say pair up, but peer up came out. So this would be the time when we break out of stuck on stupid or illusions or whatever, what have you. Some truth is going to emerge with the Seven of Swords here. It's almost like a blessing is ready for us, the Holy Grail we can access. It's been there the whole time, but we weren't able to see it or access it. There's some kind of energy on the periphery trying to depress us. It's war, the war tactic, and it's from the other side that fell out face down. So enemy entity, I, entity, ideology, whatever, what have you. The fool and the tower can be a new crisis, but it's almost like it's a correction. The tables turn here because there's a, a new ending and the indestructibility with the death card and the strength card here. So with the two of swords, it means we've been an, an, of an opposing mind up until recently, we've been, we've been having to deliberate. We're thinking about the places that we hang around and the people there with them as well, in them as well. We have a pair of twos here.
Okay. So in the next two months, there's going to be a lot of things torn apart, a lot of truths being exposed, a lot of truths coming out, and a lot of attacks that don't work. However, we will get to see the bottom of the situation or really the truth of the situation. And then over the next month or so, we're going to have our minds changed a lot about certain things. And then we have the devil. So the devil and the tower is inevitable conflict as well as the devil and the death card. But it does mean the end of obsession, the end of conflict. There's going to be some chapter ending with the fool and the death card as well. And we're going to be trading groups. We're going to be leaving um, kaka environments to better environments. We're going to be leaving toxic families to better families, whether it be family of origins or, or, or chosen family. There can be somebody here with a Scorpio rising, Scorpio Mercury. There also can be somebody here with um, a Cancer rising or their Mars in Cancer. And then we have the Cancer card here. So that is what I'm getting. We might be going up against the Cancer rising that's actually diabolical with this tower and this uh, devil card. But it's a wrap. So we're surpassing them we're going to be leaving them behind because they're demonic in their nature i would normally say they're petty they're basic but with the devil here in the five of wands they're demonic in their nature because we've been stuck with them death card devil card hangman we've been stuck in a hard place but the end of delays the end of isolation the end of suppression is here We've leveled up G up. We're fully mastered in whatever we need to be mastered in order to get a leg up here. Somebody also may have um, sun in Capricorn, moon in Cancer. Could be an Aries rising, could be a Libra rising. I'll be right back. Okay, we're back there. We've been having some spiritual interference and my chores weren't done. My intuition was going crazy. Now I can focus. I'm getting a lot actually here that there's spiritual interference. There's things going on behind our back 12th house. I was saying that our intuition is going to kick in, our intellect's going to kick in, and they're going to kick in with opportunities. It's like the veil of illusion, delusion, confusion, the veil of erosion, supplication, depression, suppression, oppression, repression is going to be lifted, if only momentarily. So things that are going bump in the night or going on behind our back or wrestling in the bushes, they're going to make themselves known or we're going to get some kind of insight, intuition about it. Because there's been a lot of forces here designed to keep us stuck, stagnant, depress us, does that make sense? And, you know, the energy that we're going up against, the, the energy that's opposing us, whether it's a person, place, or thing, other, all the same, it wants to be the harbinger of death. So death does not always mean murder, death, kill, ending up as a corpse, as a dead body. It could mean that all the opportunities in our life die, that love doesn't grow, that opportunities in abundance don't grow, that the relationships in our life, even if they're non-romantic, that they disappear and dissipate. It's almost like a fruit withering on the vine, you know, going, yeah. Ultimately, what, what's happening here is that we're coming into Christ's love, but not being the lover of Christ or being Christ's love. We're receiving the unconditional love of the divine. And we are manifesting out of ownership or out of mastery achievements, accomplishments, because we're having to repel lesser energy. It can be demonic in its nature, five of wands. There's an opportunity here to grow. It's the ace of cups. We have two aces here. So that also means somebody might've tried to spiritually marry us behind the scenes. They might've tried to keep us in some type of union with them without our knowledge so that they had access to us so that they could draw from us, maybe even swap places with us. And it, it didn't work. Um, 
Now there is some kind of spiritual union as well. So we do have some kind of golden goose aspect and we've mastered all of the things that needed to happen to prepare us for wherever we're going, whatever we're about to do. We've been prepared for something, whether we know it or not, whether we ask for it or not. It's almost like the universe or God or Allah, Buddha, Shekinah or Jehovah, whatever, prepared us for something, maybe a feast in front of our enemies, but it's more along the lines of, we're perfectly now equipped to go into this next stage because with the world card here and the full card out, it's a wrap. We are entering a new chapter with the death card. It means a chapter is closing, a period is being put on that sentence. The only thing I need to see next is the will of fortune for that to be very, very true. You know, the energy we're going up against is somebody's preparing to make more moves. There's a prince of darkness here, prince of cups, chariot, and the devil. Normally the prince of cups would negate the devil. But that's what I'm getting. Um, there's new strength here, but there's also new endings. There's a lot of transitions here with the death card and the, the full card. There's gonna be a lot of changes that are being seeded and anchored over this next two day period. So between the third, the first and the third of August, there's a lot of groundwork being laid for the universe to come in and make movement. And you know, we're gonna have a full moon the very next day on the fourth, a new moon. So that's a, we've been spending the last two weeks ending a cycle, wrapping up, purging karma. Now we're gonna be entering in the cycle of divinity. Leo and Aquarius is where God blesses or universe. To me, God is generated, operated, destroy. It's the spirit that animates the universe. It's not necessarily some, you know, man in the clouds with a white beard and pearly gates and la di da and yada yada. It's actually the spirit that animates the universe. It's generator, operator, and destroyer. So the universe has been preparing the groundwork for God to come in and make some changes. And Leo and Aquarius is where God tends to bless. There's been a lot of energies meant to destroy or to cause chaos or destruction. They were working for some time. They had a stronghold or foothold, but it's a wrap. And the whole cycle is always over whenever the death card and the world card is out. It's almost like looking back over time to see if there were any corrections. It's like the universal second draft or, or final draft. So it's kind of like we get something going on, the devil reacts, and then we go and restructure it so that the devil can't have any loopholes. The first round always has a loophole because that's what the devil does. The devil's the one that finds the loophole. Excuse me, my voice is getting scratchy. So it's I can tell you know, the dark forces or the enemy doesn't want me saying anything right now. So we'll be deliberating the findings, as I said, from the Panther Oracle and the Mr. Dashi's Panther Oracle and the Vida Sabila Daliana. So yeah, like I said, laying the groundwork for something. We're finally ready. Preparation prompt arrangement. Because something has been here for a long time. We had this eternal promise. So we are one of the attendants of the Lord. We're Purusha Avatara, like um, we're either a form or an energy that the Lord likes to take on. We might also be an attendant to the Lord. And the Lord is out here, but we don't have the attendant energy. It's usually the Hermit or Jupiter. So remember that'll come up in the next round because we do have the ministering angel. Yeah, so there's been, everybody in the collective has been going through conflict. This other person that we're up against, they they have a close eye on us, waiting for us to be knocked down, knocked over, knocked up, tear, torn down, torn apart. 
and it hasn't happened. It's because somebody wants to best us, and I'm just saying somebody, but it's an energy entity ideology. It can be the very devil itself. Because the energy of other, what we're going up against or what we're opposed by. Well, yeah, it is an adversary, it's the devil. And we're being opposed by love. So the way that they get in is by people who open up their hearts to or who we're trying to open up our hearts to. Because they're of an opposing mind, whether or not we've seen it or not. And we keep get, be giving, be, we keep being given new abundant material blessings but there's strength, courage, and wisdom needed to retain these blessings. And we needed to have a sense of loss, emotional and financial, in order to know how or what to protect so we can return to the original state of things, good-natured and pure-hearted. And we were stuck in a place for a while. A lot was dying, and there wasn't much we could do about it because we were holding space for people that dictatorship, domination, reluctance. And until we got back to that spiritual practice, religion essentially, or our spiritual practice, as I said, there wasn't gonna be a lot of change or growth. And that's the karma of the situation. That's what makes it, that's the justice of the situation. That's what brings things into alignment. We needed to have a better practice, period, point blank. And that was the adverse findings. We, the way we were getting down wasn't going to get us around. We weren't going to get to where we needed to go. We needed to have better vow, God duties and obligations. We needed to be dutiful to the purpose that was on our life, the calling that was on our life. You know, we were, we were probably squandering some kind of serene blessing that the universe had given us. So we were wasting our talents and gifts is what I'm being told. Yeah, we were wasting our talents and gifts because we were stuck looking for love instead of realizing that the reason we weren't manifesting love is because we were so reactive to everything. So we needed to withdraw in some kind of way, see things from behind the scenes. Yeah, and there was some kind of energy on it. Things We were hidden, we were cloaked because of our worth, because of our value, because of our virtue. And now we're finally ready. We've had enough experience with the with the King of Pentacles. It means we're we've mastered the thing we need to do in, according to learned skill, in order to shift things around. Oh, I made a mistake. Okay, so nearly the same cards came back. Now we have three aces out here on the board. So there is some kind of new beginning that's sanctified. There's an expansion that's been given celestial or spiritual clearance. And now this other party is the Lord. So yeah, we were stuck in a hard place. But again, we were being prepared. Oh my gosh, and it's, it's nearly the same cards here. But this time we have the universe and we have the Lord. So those material abund abundance, it, it has to deal with us being prepared here for new, new beginnings. We needed to have the support of the divine. And in order to do that, have the support of the divine. In order to do that, we needed to go into a spiritual union. We needed to take a divine sacred oath so that's the thing about the 12th house. It also stands for moksha, which just means liberation. So disgrace can mean disgrace, but it also means disaster or um, mistake, misfortune. Yeah, truth needed to come out because all these other cards are really good. Um, and, and, and frankly, the universe has been waiting, has been nurturing us. We need to be open-hearted. We need to be um, caring nurturing and kind and we need it to be innocent and pure and when that happened we would enter in by nature and by virtue a sacred union with the with the divine and that's when all these people could be purged out and cast out which is what's happening the death card the tower card the devil card that means inevitable conflict but the end of worries troubles conflicts and toxicity 
unfortunately, the devil with the full card would mean a new obsession, a new obsessor, a new stalker, new crisis with the devil and the full, with the death, the fool and the tower. That means new endings, new chapters and new crisis. So something came. What this tower brings is the right type of people because truth comes out and now we're able to give the, the devotion to the people that we need to. Because up until recently, we were devoted to people that only meant us harm, Nimika. And so when that changed around, so we needed to see Fortuna come. But the thing was that we had to see that um, a lot of people were in our midst that were only going to harm us and that we were giving affection to the wrong places. Consolazione here means that um, our wishes are going to come true, but only after things get burned to the ground. There needs to be a leveling of the playing field. We need to gain some type of message, and we've been put in isolation for that. We, we've been allowed to have our hearts broken and only given small potatoes crumbs so that we can survive, not coin so that we can thrive is what I'm hearing. Okay, so it went quiet. It's been an honor and a pleasure to serve. Thank you for allowing me the privilege and the pleasure to do so. If anything I said resonated deeply with you, go ahead and like, comment, share, subscribe, leave a review, book a session, send a donation. So this has been a clearing out of toxicity. We needed to see things from a different perspective. We were blind to the fact that all around us were darker or negative elements and energies that were actually designed to ensnare and entrap us. And that's what the universe came in and did. They came in and um, crystallized some energy so that we could see them very clearly. And the moment we began to recognize them, it's the moment that the energies were never going to be attracted again. And we're seeing that transition right now. This is going on behind our control. So we, we've been holding on to things with bloody fingernails and they're finally being ripped out of our hands. And we, we still protesting this ripping away, but the things that are being ripped away don't serve us. Okay. So take it care until we read again, do it meet again. Namaste. Bye. See you in the next one.